Of all of the various troubleshooting jobs we do at Amy and Experts, foaming is the most common one. We've dealt with foaming all over the world, and it is tricky to know what can cause the foaming and how to prevent it in the future. But step one is figuring out what is the root cause, what is the source of the foaming. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to use the operating parameters that you can measure on your DCS screen and trend to figure out where to begin the troubleshooting process of foaming. Ah, it's out of control. Call Amy and experts. Welcome to the Experts Network. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Experts Network. My name is Ben Spooner, Senior Process Engineer with Amy and Experts, and today's topic is foaming. Foaming, foaming, we talk about foaming with our clients basically every day. It's by far and away the most common kind of day-to-day -day troubleshooting issue we run into. Foaming can wreak havoc whether you are a biogas plant, an LNG plant, a refinery gas plant, you name it. Um, all amine systems have a tendency to foam. So. Uh, in our main aiming training course, we spend several hours on foaming with all kinds of videos and demonstrations of laboratory techniques, etc., that you can try to troubleshoot foaming. Uh, in today's video, we're going to try to keep it to like, you know, our usual five to 10 minutes and really just give you the basics on how to at least interpret the data that you're getting from your DCS screen and from your trend data to try to figure out what is the root cause, where is the contamination caused causing the foam coming from, all right? And contamination is key to all of this because realize that a fresh, clean, non-contaminated aiming solution won't foam. You can bubble it, shake it, agitate it all you want, it will not build up a foam situation. It's only once you contaminate it. So there's kind of two things that will contaminate amine. One is something that will lower its surface tension. Hydrocarbons are kind of the worst for this. Surface tension to strengthen the bond of the molecules uh, on the surface of the amine. The lower the surface tension, the easier it can stretch and expand and form that dome-like bubble shape. So we don't want low surface tension in our amine. And the other thing you don't want is viscosity. Things that increase the viscosity of the amine. What it does is, you know, even if a bubble does form, if it's a really thin, low viscous film, the, the film will drain right away, the bubble pops, no big deal. You formed a bubble, it popped within a second or two, no big deal. But if there's something that thickens that film or slows down its drainage, you know, viscosity, then the bubble stays stable a lot longer. Then another bubble can form on top of it and another on top of that. And that's where we run into problems. So things that increase viscosity are primarily like really, really small. The smaller, the worse suspended solids. You know, microscopic ones that get incorporated in the foam structure are bad. Amine degradation products, heat stable salts, all of these increase the viscosity of the amine and can stabilize foam. What we ultimately don't want is foam to build, especially in a trade tower, all the way from one tray to the one above, because all of that contamination that formed the foam will be carried up to the next tray above. And now you'll turn that second tray into foam, and then the third tray. And very rapidly, your foam height builds and builds until you've consumed your whole tower with foam. Then we have a problem. So the key is, don't let your amine get contaminated. But that's a tricky one to do because contamination can come at us from all directions. So how to figure out where the contamination is coming from is interpret the symptoms of foaming. So what we have here, I've listed just sort of the, the four main symptoms of foaming. The probably the most common one that operators will use is the differential pressure gauge. As a differential pressure builds kind of for no reason, we haven't increased gas flow, we haven't changed anything, we're just seeing an increase in differential pressure. That normally means we have foaming because what differential pressure gauge is measuring is what the gas has to fight through to get from the bottom of the tower to the top. So normally in a, in a trade tower, it's got to go through the tray, and then it's got to go through the two to three inches of amine on top of the tray, and then it has to repeat that, you know, anywhere from 15, 20 times, depends how many trays are in the tower. So increase in DP is bad. 
The next symptom we see, amine carryover. When amine turns to foam, it starts to build in height. It doesn't flow across the weirs and down the downcomers the way it's supposed to as a liquid. Instead, it goes up. And if we have foaming on the very top tray of our tower, whether it's an absorber or regenerator, boom, the amine leaves in a foam state out the top. Uh, you'll see it in your knockout drum level or possibly in your reflux drum. It just The levels just skyrocket on you. Next uh, symptom will be decrease in liquid level in the bottom of the tower. Or, especially in the case of absorbers where we always have a level control valve, a closing of the level control valve. And the reason why we see the levels disappear in the bottom of these towers is because when amine is foaming, remember, it's wanting the foam wants to go up, not down. So we start starving the bottom of our tower and our level control valve is going to react right away. Okay, so now we have three symptoms, differential pressure, amine carryover, and loss of liquid at the bottom. A fourth symptom, which most plants take action before this happens, but if you don't do anything, not only can you lose all your amine out of the tower, but you go off spec on your treated gas, especially plants that are trying to meet an H2S spec. Reason why, H2S does not absorb into a foaming amine. So we got all these symptoms, but what to do about it. You're the operator, you're sitting there, the DP goes up, your bottom level control valve closes. How do we fix this from happening again? Well, let's find out where the contamination came from. If we look, we're gonna use an absorber in our, in our example today, because we've got a case study coming up after that I'll talk you through. But you gotta realize that foaming can originate on the bottom tray, the middle tray somewhere, or on the very top tray itself. And depending on where the foam's originating can have a big, uh, it, it's based on what was the contamination that caused the foaming. So if we look at the bottom of the tower first, okay, if foaming happens on the very bottom tray first, we see an increase in differential pressure, and at the same time, we'll see a closing of that level control valve. And it, mean, it means the foaming's happening on the bottom tray, so liquid is not going down into the bottom the way it should. And you'll see these two symptoms happen at pretty much exactly the same time. The DP goes up, the bottom level control valve closes. Same time, all right? Now, what you will not see is amine carryover, at least not right away. Maybe eventually, but you would have to let the differential pressure just climb and climb and climb um, because what you're doing is you're filling all, all of the trays with foam before it carries over. So really delayed reaction there. That's if foaming's happening on the bottom tray. What causes this type of foaming, you guys, is inlet contaminants. Something came in with the gas, hit the amine on the bottom tray, turned it to foam. The amine itself was fine. It went in the top tray. It went down 19 trays in a lot of cases before it started to turn to foam. So no reason to rush to, you know, change out your carbon bed or, you know, change your filters because the problem was never with the amine in the first place. The problem was with the gas. Focus on your inlet gas, coalescing filter, knockout drum, upstream process, chemical injection, all that sort of stuff. Okay, got to move on. Next, foaming happening in the middle of the tower in the middle of the tower. Uh, the symptoms are similar to foaming in the bottom, but the timing between the symptoms is different. We'll still see an increase in differential pressure because now we're, you know the gas is still having to fight through foam whereas it used to not have to, so the DP goes up. But what you do not see is that immediate closing of the bottom level control valve. And you also don't see an immediate amine carryover. We have to wait for the foam to build up before it'll carry over, and we have to wait for all the trays below the foam to drain dry before we'll see an effect in the bottom level controller. So there's a, there's a time gap between the symptoms when foaming happens in the middle of the tower. Now, there's really only one thing that can cause foaming in the middle of the tower, and that's condensed hydrocarbons. It means you didn't set your amine temperature properly. You Hydrocarbons entered the absorber as a gas, but before they left, they got condensed to liquid. We did a whole YouTube video on this, on how to set your lean amine temperature. Go back and watch that video. Learn about hydrocarbon phase envelopes and dew points and determine how to set your amine temperature properly because that will cause foaming in the middle of the tower. Um, Finally, and really one of the worst ones, is if we have foaming on the very top tray. It means as soon as the amine entered that tower and it got agitated, the first second of being agitated, boom, it just turned to foam. So what the operator is going to see there is 
immediate aiming carryover, but really nothing else. You don't see the increase in differential pressure because the gas, it really, it got through basically the entire tower before it really hit the foam. And where a differential pressure gauge is, the, the top tap is normally located is right above that top tray. So the gas only had like maybe an inch of foam before the DP reading ends. So you don't see foaming in your differential pressure gauge when the foaming's happening on the top tray. And you're also not going to see any change in the bottom's level or level control valve close because we would have had to wait for the entire tower to drain empty, you know, because all the aiming's going up and overhead instead of going down. You know, so eventually the bottom level control valve closes, but it'd be several minutes later. So in this case, it means the problem was indeed with the aiming. We had contaminated aiming. All it needed was agitation and it turned to foam. So very quickly here, guys, here's a case study we had where a plant was, you can see where all the lines are straight there, everything was going fine, all of a sudden, boom, right there, foaming. And the symptoms the operator saw was we saw the overhead level shoot up, we saw the level control valve open in the, in the treated gas knockout drum to try to get rid of all this aiming that happened. And if you look at this graph, it looks like at the same time, the rich aiming level control valve, the, 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 the absorber level control valve closed because it wasn't getting aiming. But the timestamp on this, on this graph that we were sent is spread out over like a full day, it's like 24 hours. So we gotta zoom in to this specific area where the foaming happened. And when we do that, here we go, okay, boom. Here's the point where the operator saw the differential pressure start to rise, okay? But if you look at this closely, it's like two minutes goes by before we see any aiming carryover. So there was a delay between the rise in differential pressure and actual aiming carryover. In this time, there was still no change in the bottom, okay? For there, we had to wait five minutes from the time of the DB going up before we see the bottoms level get affected. So what does this tell us, guys? Well, we go back to this slide. Boom, the foaming was originating in the middle of the tray the problem there is condensed hydrocarbon. We need to review our hydrocarbon dew point, our phase envelope. We need to adjust our lean amine temperature, possibly adjust the feed gas temperature to knock more hydrocarbons out before it enters the absorber. But this gives you an idea as to how to use trend data to start the troubleshooting process. Doesn't mean troubleshooting is gonna be easy, but you at least have a place to start. So that's it for today, guys. Thanks very much for your kind attention. Please like us and subscribe on our, our uh, not LinkedIn, YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you again in two weeks for more Experts Network.